Don't forget to visit www.ergonology.com. On there you'll find all of our social media links and forums and 3D printed sections. Facebook group is there for you to discuss anything you want to do with air rifles, air pistols and technology. Our dedicated forum where you can buy and sell anything that you want with regards to air rifles and air pistols. As well as our 3D printed section where you'll find the cradles that you can purchase for the chronographs for FX and the ATM ballistic rangefinders. Right guys, um, we're here at a very secret location, yes, somewhere totally just yeah. off the A53, uh, somewhere near... Could be 54. It could be 54. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in Staffordshire. Um, we're at a private range here and I've got a good friend here, Tony, um, from Day State. How right. are you doing? Yeah. Good. And um, seeing as you forgot the coffee... Yes, well... I brought the coffee I for us. The <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take my cap off because of, uh, that's doing my head in. There's the okay. sponsorship. Northern... Sh um, yep, yep, the Northern Shooting Show. So, um... We're going to have a bit of a chat today and a bit of a play. We've got uh, the Red Wolf Safari here, mm -hmm. and um, you're going to let me play with that yes, FAC, yes. aren't yes, you? Yes, that's right. Well, we're on our private range here, which is FAC rated, so yes. this is where we do all our testing mm -hmm. in the clubhouse at the moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, we can go out to 100 yards, but it's an awful day out there. It's, it's raining. So I think we'll maybe restrict it to 50. Yeah. We've done the 50 yard range. Well, I'll um, send you out to go and do the targets, so I'll right. stay under the shelter. <laughs> and um, what power are you running at with uh, this bad uh, boy? This one's uh, just a uh, Mere 80 foot pounds. Mere 80 yeah. foot pounds. Yeah. Anyway, more of that later on. We're going to throw a bit of that into the video later. But um, I think today we want to talk about silencers. Yes, or we do. Moderators. Do we have to talk quietly? Um, yeah, <laughs> talk quietly. So we've got a selection of them here. But mm -hmm. um, before we do that, so. You know, there's always this question, what are they called? Are they called silencers? Are they called moderators? Are they called something else? What's your you thoughts? Because I've got them, some as well. You can call them what you like. They are, it's a, just a term. There is no official uh, designation. I think the confusion's arrived um, because uh, the Americans have this uh, amazing law yeah. um, that, they, that silencers have to be on a, on a, a permission, on a license. Yeah which you have to get, I presume, from the FBI or something like that. <laughs> I think it's uh, Dillinger did it in on silencers yeah. and haven't really got over it since. Funny enough, in a country where you can pretty much own anything, yeah. silencers are a big no-no. I, I think, I, think I, I did a bit of, bit of research on it as well, yeah. and I think at the end of the day, the patent that came out on them was, it was a silencer. They called it a silencer. Right. But I think you're sort of right in a way is that moderator is being used a lot so that it's not well, called maybe a silencer. Well is a bad silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. uh, but it's, uh, you, I've seen them being described because, so the, but the American thing is that you, if you need, if you're going to have a silencer on a firearm in the States you need to have a license. Yeah. And you can get one and yeah. I don't think it's that much money but they don't like the idea of having regulation and yeah. feds involved so they tend to shy away from it. But, uh, so that is always a big thing for them. Now, air guns in America are not, don't come under a federal firearms license, so yeah. they, are, they are basically exempt. So air guns are exempt, the uh, silencer laws in the States, but there's a condition in the silencer law that says if it can be modified, to fit, an air gun one can be modified to fit a firearm, mm. then of course uh, it's illegal as well. Yeah. And anything can be modified by anybody, can't it? So of it becomes it an open... So what generally we've been doing for years with American guns is building in the moderators into the barrels, Yeah. which is why that came up. Not because it was a good thing to do, it's yeah. because that was really at the time the only way to get quiet air guns. Because American air guns, they want quiet rifles. They want quiet rifles because usually they're shooting in their yard, as they call it, yeah. and um, they don't want to annoy the neighbours, even if the neighbours are away away. Mm -hmm. Remember these are high power guns and they can make a bit more noise. So they want silenced guns. Uh, what we do on American guns is we tend to bond the, the silencer itself onto the gun so it's integral with the gun. Uh, yes, yes. And that means it can't be used on anything else. So that stops that them gets taking around, it off and points it Screwing it onto a rim <laughs> fire. And, and so then at the end of the day you don't actually then necessarily have a rifle and a silencer, you have just the rifle. That's exactly right. Yeah. And the other thing we do is that um, on the, the study on the day six silencers, we engrave and we mark on the packaging air gun use only. Yeah. Which helps with the American market, also helps with the UK market where you still get people confused about you know um, black powder uh, was it um, firearms rated silences where they have to be proofed. Yeah. So you do get people saying, oh, it's being used on an FAC air gun, therefore it needs to be proofed. Uh, rubbish. But we just to make it clear, we we put air gun use only on the silencer yeah. or on the box, and we do do one or two other party tricks on the silencers in so much as um, for instance, we make them so they will catch fire 
if you use them on a rim fire. That's, about <laughs> all we can That's do. interesting. So if you were to put a day state silencer onto a rim fire rifle, you would get a few shots, but then you would get flames, <laughs> and uh, that would be the end of the silencer. Well, and that's built in. Uh, I think the early ones we had, um, it would blow apart because yeah. the pressures on them, you know, the, the gas pressures compared to air are huge. Yes. And it would just dissolve the silencer. But now mostly it's designed to catch flames. Well, I suppose that's one way of self regulating yourself. So that's the, we do that. There's no requirement to do that, but we do that just to, to keep it as an air gun only silencer. So we got a selection of the uh, silencers. Yes, yeah, so you picked up the zero fires. dB. I've picked up the zero dB here. Yes. Um, I'll take some pictures of this and yes. uh, leave it around. So um, tell me the story. Why did this happen? It happened because um, we were doing a lot of work with Andrew Huggett and yep. Huggett moderators, and they're very good moderators. Yes. Um, but we, he was uh, obviously you get a conflict of interest mm -hmm. when you've got somebody who's doing their own sciences selling to here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. And we're buying off him and selling to the same here, there, and everywhere. Oh, I see. So yeah. we needed our own silencer. We also needed something which, um, when they're put on the end of a shroud, so you've got a barrel, then you've got a space, mm -hmm. then an adapter then another space and the baffles as well. Yeah. If there's a few thou out, yeah. you get clipping. Yes. So what we wanted to do was redesign the silencer so that we had more space, but yeah. without making any more noisy. That's, yeah. To make a silencer quiet, you make a tiny little hole that yes. the pellet can just come out. Yeah. You true everything up, um, and so it's perfectly in line, mm -hmm. and you've got a very quiet silencer. But how do you do that when you don't know what gun it's going to be fitted to, what the tolerances are like on the true. threads, what the, what every, it's not necessarily one of our guns, so uh, it's been given a little bit more clearance mm. to allow it not to clip, yep. uh, but also it's just as quiet as a hugger. So that's the main reason for, for doing this, so that you could tailor these directly to your So we could sell them to dealers who yep. um, perhaps weren't allowed a hugger uh, agency because they that was with somebody else, usually their competitor. Yeah. We can put it in our range and sell it worldwide, and also we can make these adaptions that, okay. uh, that make it more appropriate to guns that perhaps aren't perfectly in line. All right. So I've got uh, another one here. Um, this is an ATEC, um, and this is actually designed apparently by Norwegians, and it's supposed to be for rimfire right. on here, but um, you can actually use these on air rifles as well. Yeah, well, any silencer can be used on an air rifle because it's, it's the other way around. Yeah, it's the other it? way yeah. around that you yeah. can't use them, so you can yeah. pick these up fairly cheap. I think I picked that up for about £40. Yes. But then um, I've got here, I think this is the most one of the most common ones. Well, it's here. become the industry standard. It has, hasn't it? it? This the is Virac, the, yeah. the old Virac on I get, Can I tell you a story about that? Go on, tell me. So, what happened with the Virac for us is that, so this is from a day stick perspective, is that we were developing our own Airstream silencers, Mark 1, Mark 2, we got to mm -hmm. Mark 6, I think, before we stopped. And um, we had a silencer which took forever to put together. It was put together with clamps and yeah. pieces. And we found a company in North Wales that did sintered plastic. That is, they pass nitrogen through uh, plastic, yeah. and they form bubble cavities, Yes, and it becomes a silencer. Ah. And, and we worked on them, and we made some silencers, the inserts that went into the silencer. And yeah. then we had an idea, we went back to them and we got them to actually machine it. So we were able to machine baffles in, into the center plastic. Science. And then they said, well, we can change the size of the bubbles from large to small, what do you want? Can you do it progressively? Yes. So we had bigger bubbles at the beginning of the silencer, so bigger cavities, yeah. and then decreasing to smaller cavities. And then we machined it in and we had the perfect silencer, but it wasn't that cheap. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> um, and two weeks later, hull cartridge, and they had a muzzle weight on the end of the brand new F uh, 100, uh, 100 yeah. um, what's it, the HW100, HW and they said, oh, the, the boys want a silencer. So somebody in Germany went out, got some Carmen hair curlers, a bit of J-cloth, wrapped it round it, put it inside the muzzle weight, and it was quieter than our silencer. <laughs> so we'd gone through all this development, <laughs> yeah, um, and so we called that the uh, Frau Curly unit the FKU, yeah. which is what he did to us. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done all that work, and it was beaten by two Carmen hair curlers and a piece of Jay cloth. <laughs> and they have changed them from pink to grey, yep. but I don't think there's an awful lot of difference. But it works. It works. They work. And of course, the costs of, yeah. you know, um, though that kind of technology is very, very cheap, and it has become the industry standard. I, I think I think these basically, you know, this is what you mark everything against uh, with the Virac on there. Um, yeah. And I, I found uh, with the ATEC one that is... Yeah, it's a little bit long. I think that's yeah. the only criticism. That's the only downside. Yeah. It's the quite downside. light, yeah. um, and it's, uh, you know, well put together. You know, two pieces of plastic and some yeah. and some wrap. 
but it does work very well, and I don't want to be too critical of it because it has. They have sold. I well, it sort happened. of really comes yeah. onto a lot of the questions because of uh, we we've got plenty of um, silences around. We've got uh, we've got the day state universal. That's a, yeah. It still works really well. Carbon fiber. This is the one that would catch fire if you used the other rim part. It does and, look pretty. Yeah, and it's a nice answer. We sold loads of those, and of course we do one with a which fits in the middle. Yeah. Uh, and we've been doing that for years. Perfect on a huntsman. And then of course then we've got the old classic Huggett. And yes. I, personally, I, I love the Huggett. So I've got them on, 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 on the Red Wolf. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I think they are the sexiest looking now. Um, yeah. uh, sexiest looking. Talking about uh, sexy, silences. have you got the new one? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've not got the new one. Andrew, you still need to send me one. <laughs> no batteries with it, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I've not had a look. I've certainly seen it on Andy's Air Gun reviews. He did, he did a review on them it's as well. It's the Astil, isn't it? Astil, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you know what that means? No. I did, I did find out. Go on, what's it? Was, there was a thread on uh, the forums about what does it mean. It's an um, Anglo-Saxon word for still. For still? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, as still, to still. Yeah. Ah, there ah, we go. Nice one. Um, education as well as... Uh, education as well, definitely. <laughs> but I, f I find with silences, you know, I'm, go I'm going to be very controversial, I suppose, yeah. here. <clears throat> and um, apologies to all of the, uh, the silencer makers out there, but um, at the end of the day, that we're talking between all of these, two or three dBs, if that, on yeah, an error. Yeah, and it depends where you measure it. And we've done some science uh, testing. Yeah. And if your science is losing against somebody else's, move the meter. Um, <laughs> because it it's, just depends on where you put it. Yeah. Um, and there's also uh, tone as well, which the, not all the meters pick up on. Yeah. So you've got that as well. And, um, you know, how quiet does it need to be? It's an air rifle. Uh, you know, it's already yeah. quiet. And at 12 foot pound, the most of the noise is the pellet flying through the air, and certainly when it hits the target. Yeah. So um, you, I don't. I think people overthink it. Um, but you know, I think looks, uh, style should mm -hmm. be considered, not just pure science effect. Otherwise, you'd just buy a coke bottle, wouldn't you, and put a hole in the end. True, true, yeah. true. Well, I've, I've seen on the internet the guys that used oil cans and then put rags and basically just yeah. shot one pellet through yes. it and that was it. You've yeah. now got a silencer. Oil filter. Oil filter. Perfectly yeah. well. It's got everything in there that you well, want. That was the way people have got around the rules in yeah. America and stuff yeah. like that. I'll tell you what though, I think this is a great time for me to, uh, me and you to go out and have a play with this Red Wolf uh, uh, Safari. Um, 70, 80 foot pounds. This is going to be my first time at the FAC. Um, we'll come back afterwards and we'll talk a little bit more, but we're going to have a bit of a competition as well. Oh, right, and, okay. Um, you know, Tony, Tony apparently be worried. Uh, Tony <laughs> apparently is a very good shot and we all know I'm a rubbish shot, so we'll see how we'll get on with that. Right, right guys, um, we're in our little private range here, I've got Tony here, and I've got the Safari, the first time I've got my hands on this 80 foot pound 303. Last time I shot a 303, it hurt my shoulder and it was in the cadets. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tony, is there anything special about this that you should do? Is it just behave yeah, just like a normal red? Yeah, and fix safety catch off. So, safety catch, and basically it's exactly the same as a normal red. Absolutely. Rock. Am I going to get a kick? No, nothing at None all. None at all. No, that's right, well, let's give this a go. First time, guys. Let's see how we get on. Whoa! <laughs> I flinched. <laughs> wow. Yeah, take a couple of shots to get used to it. Oh, whoa! There's a bit more energy there, you definitely notice it. Jeez! I actually, you do actually feel that move. Yeah, there's a good, you do get a jabber. Wow. Might need the beat machine. Getting Ooh. better, getting to relax now. Yeah. You can hear that hit. That's a massive fun. The last one. <laughs> right guys, so competition time. He's supposed to be a good shot. So what we got, we're out at 35 meters. Uh, we're gonna have 10 shots each, and this is bragging rights. So uh, camera down range. Tony, don't shoot my camera, please. <laughs> Off you go. 
Oh, I can beat that one. I know you can. Oh, straight through the center. He's getting into the swing of it. Okay, so now it's my turn. Let's see, Tony's checking through my red wolf scope. Um, he's probably got the famous um, Tony Beerless crosshairs at an angle. You know, I've got a funny feeling there's a bit of cheating going on here. Okay, so here we go. Oh, me. <laughs> Good shot, though. Sense. Need the arms like Garth to pick these pallet, uh, these magazines up. Oh, I can see the hole on that one. Yeah, that's really shown up. Oh. Size that out. Hit the wood behind. There we go. I think it's time to go and count the scores. <laughs> All right, so it's competition time, rapid shoot. We've got 10 targets down range. We've got two magazines of five each. Uh, we're at 35 meters. Uh, if we run out of pellets, guess what? We've got to load up again. Uh, and no single shot loaded. All right. Are you ready for this, Tony? Ready right, to I'll do the countdown. Hang on, make sure that everybody is active and ready to go. Ready? In five, four, three, two, one. Go! <laughs> right, so we're back, we're off the shooting, and um, well, we're recording this in one take, uh, yeah. so we don't know the results of the shooting. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, leave your comments and thoughts down below, we'd love to know. But let's start continue about um, the uh, silences and modifiers. Yeah. Now, 
this is controversial and I hope I don't get myself into trouble with this, but um, I've not done anything with it. Well, I have tried once, yeah. but basically this is 3D printed. Yeah. Um, so all of the guys on my channel know that I do 3D printing and I thought it would be just a bit of an experiment to try this um, and printed this out and it's got baffles in there. What are the rules on doing stuff like that in the UK? Can you do that? I don't know if I um, I'm not going to use it. Um, just If you did it for a rim fire or a firearm then you immediately come into section one of the firearms act. Yeah. If you're doing it for an air gun it's, it's less clear. Yeah. Um, I think you can. Um, mm -hmm. But there is somewhere, um, when they brought out the uh, 2008 amendments of the Firearm Act, mm -hmm. they put controlled items into sale. For instance, yep. barrels, silencers yes. are a controlled part and are supposed to be um, controlled by the firearms, yep. uh, firearms licenses. So if you go into a, a shop and buy a scope, um, they don't really have to do anything. Yep. If they're buying sling swivels, they don't have to do anything. If you're mm -hmm. buying a gun, a silencer or component parts such as a barrel, um, then they are they have to check that you are an authorised person. In yes. other words, they have to probably check that you are not prohibited mm -hmm. but by usually asking you. Yep. <laughs> um, and they, most shops will take your name and address and put it in their lug. Yep. The silencer one is really vague. Uh, I never found where that was written in law. It, yep. came, it was on the Gun Trade Association um, notes in other words this is it sent out what you need to do mm -hmm. to all the shops in 2008 and we've got a copy of that and that says that silences must be controlled where it is in the firearms act amendment never been able to find it so i always felt it was maybe they forgot to put it in and they asked the gta could you just yeah do this um, but it, i don't think there's really too much control it's clearly an air gun silencer only because it's plastic yeah it wouldn't work on anything else um so i think you're, you're all right yeah, well, I, I did this as a bit of fun. Because um, when you start to, to sell it... Well, that, that's where I was going to come yeah. on to. I, I did this as an experiment in a controlled condition. I have shot once through and it actually worked and I made sure it was safe and everything and um, just, to, just to see if it actually worked. Um, and then people are asking me and I was like, absolutely no way am I even going to go near that minefield of trying to... Yeah, I think it would be. I, I can't really tell you, but I, yeah. I think you'd... You, it's, first of all, it's by way of trade, yep. so you're acting as a trader on that, which you're probably registered for anyway. Yep. But the moment you sell a science of by a trade, you could be expected to have an egg and only RFD, which a could be. A absolutely, thing. yeah. So I think this is just a little, a little party piece that sits on the shelf yeah. at the moment, okay. just to so. Yeah, yes, it, it is possible yourself, to do sure it. No they do actually work very, very well yeah. um, to do that. So, like I said, to Diane, we started talking about how loud and how quiet silences are yeah. and I suppose you know, I, I've tried m multiple silences throughout the last few years and there's hardly any difference between mm. them at, um, you know, it, like you said it depends on where you measure it from. Yeah. Um, I suppose where it does start to make a big difference would be on FAC type rifles because of they're much louder and therefore um, the better quality silencer you've got on there the better it works. Yeah, generally the bigger they are on, a, on an FAC silencer yeah. the more they work. Um, but you, yes, you can take an awful lot of noise down with a, with a, with a yeah. light silence on FAC. Yeah, I think a lot of people do worry about, you, know, you see it on the post all the time, is, um, you know, which silence, which is the quietest and that lot, and we see a lot of reviews, and, mm. and you were talking a couple of dBs, and like you said, it depends where you put the, the meter. Yeah. And I think the most important thing as well is, what's it like from somebody 30 metres away listening to you shoot? Yeah. You behind the rifle are going to hear all the noises of well, the 30 rifle. 30 metres away, you hear the noise on the rifle because yeah. you have a lot of mechanical noise going on. Yeah. Uh, so it's very very difficult for you to judge. Um, mm -hmm. For somebody 30 metres away, he can't hear the rifle at all. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, he can't hear anything. He'll hear the pellet in flight and he'll hear this huge bang as yep. the pellet hits the target or goes through the target. Yep. Um, but it, um, it, the silencer just does takes the nozzle report that doesn't do much else yeah I don't think you need I mean some definitely I mean that you got a humor there yeah we got the humor uh, here as well a, uh, world's ugliest silencer but really works yeah and uh, so that's a multi baffle style yeah where you can add different baffles yeah you can see that's it extremely screws. quiet I've got to say I was very impressed with how quiet that is mm -hmm. but again do you need that I suppose that extra it diminishing returns isn't yeah. it uh, yeah. right at the end as we all know yeah it, yeah. it, it comes down to diminishing returns yeah. I think yeah, anytime people ask me um, what silencers should I get? Um, and I, I'm generally talking uh, sub 12 foot pound. I say, well, basically, what, how much do you want to spend and how pretty do you want it to look? Yeah, because they're all going to yeah. do the job. Yes, exactly. Really but I much. think it, if you, you know, if you've got a 2,000 pound and a half thousand pound air rifle like yeah. that on there, 
then it deserves a decent science and not something that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and that's why I've got my wonderful Huggets yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. That just matches the right one. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, it's a really interesting conversation, discussion about um, silences or moderators and how we should, you yeah. know, what's it all about. And it's just one of these conversations that's going to constantly go on all yeah. the time. So, um, Tony, uh, thank you very much. It's been really okay. interesting, as usual. Thank you so much for the shooting on there. And, of course, right. at the moment, I don't know what the results are. <laughs> <laughs> We're wrong, walking around like this. And um, we'll come back and hopefully we'll do some more videos like this again. Sure. Thank, thank you very much, Tony. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.